tamponade, in essence, is a severe clinical condition and patients who have tamponade have to be symptomatic in one way or other. So expect to see symptoms of either hypotension, dyspnea, tachycardia or edema, or maybe all of them together. Tamponade is on the far side of hemodynamic compromise. You might have more subtle forms of hemodynamic importance of pericardial effusion, and these you can detect with echocardiography as well. The example I'm showing you right here is that of right atrial inversion, which is a subtle form of hemodynamic compromise. You see that both in the subcoastal view and in the four-chamber view. This patient has a more progressed form now. Here we not only have inversion of the right atrial wall, but also of the left atrial wall. Still nothing to worry about if the patient is asymptomatic. And finally, in this patient, you will have to worry because now we have compression of the right ventricle. And patients usually develop symptoms in this setting. Again, a patient where the right ventricle was perforated during implantation of a pacemaker. In all of these settings, what you should be looking for is the IVC, because if you have a dilated IVC, this somehow speaks for a hemodynamic significance of the pericardial effusion. So follow the IVC as well and take that into your assessment of patients with pericardial effusions. And one last topic, if you have a very, very large pericardial effusion as the swinging heart that I showed you previously, most likely the patients will have at least some degree of dyspnea or some symptoms. Not necessarily tamponade, but they will be symptomatic. And frequently you will have to act, especially if an infusion that is as large as this one here. And finally, you do not need to be a rocket scientist to know that you have to act in this situation. The patient that has bleeding into the pericardial sac. The role of echocardiography here is simply to document that blood is in there. And once you have that, rush to the OR.